<clears throat> um, all right. <clears throat> well, this will be archived, so I can't just sit here until uh, and wait for uh, you know thirty people to show up. So, for those of you uh, who are not watching live, uh, I I'll recreate the Battle of Britain again. Me. Yay, Britain wins. There you go. Uh, all right. Well, hey, <clears throat> good afternoon uh, to all of ye. And I'll, I'll, I'll keep the traditional ME109 up here. Note, note the detail in that drop tank, by the way. This is a really lucky find. There's a hobby shop uh, very close to the Lockheed Skunk Works, by the way. And... Um, uh, they I'd never seen. I grew up building models, and the smallest I ever got was one seventy-second scale, which for model train users, you know, that's HO scale. Broken and unreadable. <clears throat> let me try this. Let me let me let me jerry rig this deal. There we go. <clears throat> that should be much better. Is that much better? Check, check, how you read me, licking chicken, loud and clear. Um, so anyway, my daughter went, went to the this uh, this hobby shop, and I'm wandering around. She's looking for paints and, you know, girl stuff. And, uh, and I found these, one one-hundredth scale. Um, pretty crazy, amazingly detailed. Uh, here's, here's the Spitfire Mark V. So I had to had to buy these things. They come they come pre-painted, by the way, and and just because I like to show off and everything. Uh, here's uh, <clears throat> the results. The results of the uh, of the hobby shop are uh, electric owl. That's when she entitled this is electric owl. So, uh, the opening bid is 500 Robux because she plays Roblox. So, believe me, if, if she found out that she could auction her paintings for, for online currency, she would do it. Um, <clears throat> all right, so a couple things to talk about. Uh, first of all, uh, I have an array of my family's wetsuits. These are for mom and I over here. That's, that's my daughter's. And then this is what's called the lizard pattern. This was uh, French, uh, the French um, uh, battle uniforms of the of the fifties and sixties uh, were what what are called herringbone twill. Um, you know, ours are sort of a, almost a, a regular weave, but the the French employed what was called a herringbone twill, which is a very very rugged fabric uh, on the one hand. But this was their uh, uh, answer to the problem of camouflage in Southeast Asia was this, which they called the lizard pattern, but it didn't debut in Southeast Asia until very, very late. And then only in a few legion units. This camouflage uh, saw most of its use in Algeria during the Algerian Civil War, where <clears throat> at first glance, you're going to look at that and say that's not very well suited for the desert of Algeria. Well, the deal was that civil war was fought overwhelmingly in the cities and uh, in some of the green belt in, in Algeria. And this is something that's interesting because um, the uh, scandal uh, about the Afghans choosing the wrong camo and the U.S. Army wasting $28 million on, on this camouflage that only works in 10% of the country, it's it's a it's a little disingenuous. Uh, the Canadian company that makes it, um, um, you know, they made out like bandits. They made 28 million dollars, but the fighting in Afghanistan is in the green areas. I mean, in all honesty, nobody is out in the middle of Kandahar uh, spilling blood. 
for meaningless deserts. Uh, you ask anyone who has served in Afghanistan over the past 16 years, where were you fighting? You were, you were fighting in Helmand, in Nuristan, uh, especially in, in uh, Nuristan and, uh, <clears throat> uh, and the mountains that resemble Eastern Oregon uh, or the Eastern Sierras. In fact, the Eastern Sierras were used for Lone Survivor uh, and other, other films like that. It's very rugged, but, but mountainous, almost alpine terrain. So anyway, it's neither here nor there. So what um, I was going to pimp was uh, on today's uh, Dark Secret Place on ConnectPal.com, Dark Secret Place, um, uh, the Washington Post came out with an article today about the Obama administration's sort of too little, too late cyber war with Obama, pardon me, with Putin. And it, <clears throat> um, I'll give you the, the quick version. Uh, and then we'll talk about the Canadian sniper, uh, two-mile shot. But the quick version of the um, uh, the uh, Obama counter FSB thing is that uh, it was late in the election process. It was August of 2016 that the American intelligence community went to the Obama administration and said, we have specific, very real information about uh, about disinformation campaigns designed to prevent Hillary Clinton from being elected. Uh, I'll go. I go into further detail on why Putin had a had a uh, axe to grind against Hillary Clinton on the podcast at ConnectPal.com, Dark Secret Place. Um, uh, but suffice it to say, he didn't want to see her elected. Uh, anyone but her. And by August of 2016, that anyone was going to be Donald Trump by default. I've never said. I don't think Trump colluded with Russia, uh, at least consciously, but um, the, the uh, Russian government weaponized disinformation, which by itself, you know, in and of itself, disinformation is a weapon. But by being able to target it at specific types of Facebook users and things like that, uh, there, there's no doubt it was, it was um, weaponized because it affected how people voted and what they thought of Hillary Clinton, uh, or it convinced a lot of people not to even give a shit, which was the biggest sin that we allowed to happen, was um, um, the, the main goal of Putin was to uh, establish doubt in our democratic system, which is something that we have been inculcated all of our lives to believe is that, uh, is that no matter what, we're a nation of rules and laws. You listen to the referee, um, all bad calls even out at the end, but we believe in the system. We believe in the NFL. We believe in the NFL rule book. Um, you, you know, it's an article of faith that a baseball umpire can make mistakes, but overall, uh, you defer to him, right? You don't beat him up. You know, this is not, you know, European soccer or Italian soccer or whatever. So to be able to uh, cast doubt into our democratic system was the ultimate goal of Putin, and of that there's no debate. Um, and I get more into that on the on the podcast as well. Um, but what the Obama administration uh, did that was sort of considered too little, too late was, <clears throat> pardon me, um, uh, was the the counter cyber operation, uh, and it was a combination of U.S. Cyber Command, you know, a uniform. Uh, sir, branch of the U.S. military, uh, the NSA, CIA, etc., uh, and it it was an employment of everything from what are called digital bombs to actual physical um, um, inter interceptors, interrupters. And by digital bombs, uh, a, di a digital bomb is a piece of malware developed at NSA or Cyber Command that is injected into an enemy's information. <clears throat> All right. So, sorry about that. <clears throat> who, who stayed? So, my, my, phone, my phone actually died because uh, it said <clears throat> uh, that the phone was too hot, whatever that means. <clears throat> so... How, how's the sound now? I'm I'm back out. I had to I had to initiate Operation Dancing Waters. As uh, as you see, we'll go out we'll go out here to Operation Dancing Waters. There behind me.
Oop, now we're getting rained on now. All right, so I initiated Operation Dancing Waters, so we should be good. <clears throat> we had a barred owl kill itself on, on one of our... Uh, on one of our wires. Can you see that? Um, he was he was trying to trying to kill something, <clears throat> and he almost like cut his head off on a on a cable. So he was dead when we found him, and he was bright white. Uh, so it happened at night, and so we uh, we we cut his claws off. So. Let me see if I can put that there. Does that work? So where, where, uh, yeah, it slashed his throat. It was kind of sad. Kind of a gruesome scene, but that's the, the deal about raising chickens and having a bunch of dogs, uh, is that my, my daughter is, um, she's, she's a little, a little more familiar with critters dying than most kids these days, certainly in the LA area. So she knows that, uh, she knows that the, the egg machines, you know, you can name them if you want, but just don't get too close to them. Uh, the dogs, though, that's a different deal. When we've lost a couple dogs over the past year, uh, <clears throat> so so anyway, so the uh, Obama administration, through Cyber Command and NSA, according to the Washington Post article that I linked um, earlier, you can go to connectpal.com. If you subscribe, you'll you'll see it there. But they implanted uh, the, uh, the equivalent of digital bombs, um, uh, which uh, on command or on reaction will activate as malware. It's very similar to what we call Stuxnet, but that wasn't the name of it. Uh, the overall NSA Cyber Command uh, campaign against Iran is called Olympic Games and the so-called Stuxnet to uh, interfere with uh, with um, uh, centrifuges was just one aspect of it, and it would have gone undetected for a long time, except that the Israelis uh, uh, got very aggressive with the code. There's a great documentary called uh, Zero Days, and uh, hang on, hang on a second. I'm, I forgot a very crucial part of today's broadcast. Hang on. Yeah, there we go. Brought, brought to you by Magpul. Not really, though. I just I just love Magpul and and Cry Precision. So anyway, yeah. If you don't know this, you know iPhones. <clears throat> um, I iPhones. I'm shit at YouTube. Thank you. Uh, iPhones will overheat. They'll accumulate heat. But uh, so anyway. Uh, so this is an ongoing campaign uh, against now uh, that the Obama administration launched against Russian infrastructure um, <clears throat> through the use of malware, etc. And this was, to, to be honest with you, uh, July of 2016, um, discovering in July of 2016 that the Russians had a grudge against Hillary Clinton. There's no excuse for the Obama administration and John Brennan, the former head of the CIA, to have not anticipated that the Russians would have an agenda uh, that would include preventing Hillary Clinton from being president. Um, and it's because Hillary Clinton's State Department actively attempted to get Vladimir Putin uh, to uh, lose in an election. Now, this is amazingly naive by the, uh, by the American State Department to think that Vladimir Putin would, would actually... Uh, would actually allow an actual free and fair election to occur is astoundingly naive of, of an American State Department. For a Russian to actually think it would happen is nearly suicidal. But Putin, regardless, never forgave Hillary Clinton, and he was going to do everything he could, and he did, to prevent her from, <clears throat> from uh, uh, being elected. And if you don't know this, if you're on Facebook and YouTube, um, YouTube and Facebook are cookieing the shit out of your computer. Google, you know, owns YouTube. Um, ever since I put Google Analytics on my ConnectPal page, uh, and then other pages that I run, I absolutely was an education. And I'll turn like this, because I'm... And you know what? I'll even sit down. <clears throat> so ever since, um, but you can still see that the, the dancing waters are still happening. Um, but 
uh, ever since I l learned all about Google Analytics, um, and then now Facebook Analytics, I'm absolutely blown away. The the Dark Secret page, Dark Secret Place page that I run. Um, if you don't run a a, a a a Facebook page, if you just have your own Facebook page, you can still do it. You can still run your analytics and see who it is that's following you and, and things like that. But um, what they were able to do was to, be, because Facebook will target you. You can go to Facebook and you can say, um, uh, I want um, black female 25 to 35 year old Sagittarians because I sell a special hoodie. They will get that for you. Um, you, can, you can buy just that demographic. Um, this is why radio is being left behind because radio wishes that it could target um, demographics like that. It cannot. It cannot. So, I mean, literally, <clears throat> um, uh, you know, a, a, a radio station has to have the widest footprint it can, which is what radio stations do, get the broadest audience that they can. You can't get everybody, so you wind up being specific, like K-Rock or Alt-98.7 in Los Angeles are both going after the alternative listener. <coughs> Pardon me. Time to wet my whistle. But the important thing is, um, in, in terms of, uh, of <clears throat> uh, specifically targeting uh, one particular type of voter, Facebook was absolutely put on this earth to do that because you don't have to run commercials on TV. Um, you know, you're not, uh, yeah, and we're not talking about people under 28. Facebook is really kind of a, a, a 29 and older kind of a thing, but that's who votes. It's really hard to get people younger than that in significant numbers to vote, all the Bernie bullshit aside. So what the Russians were able to do was to contract through a couple different front companies um, <clears throat> and uh, send all of the disinformation that was being made uh, by, frankly, private contractors in Kosovo and all that, these kids that were putting, these 19 and 20-year-olds that were putting up uh, these fake news sources and then writing stories out of whole cloth, they would aggregate those and then send them back through Sputnik to your Facebook page. So if you were someone maybe who had never voted before, they knew that. Um, uh, or if you only voted far right or whatever, they would send you stories that you would share, pass along, or whatever, or would influence you. And the stories generally were made up about, um, you know, Hillary Clinton and the pedophile Pizzagate thing is a great, uh, great example. I mean, look how many hundreds of thousands of people thought that was true. One guy actually acted on it and, you know, went there. Um, so they're, they're weaponizing information. Uh, and regardless of whether or not you think that, because I don't think Donald Trump colluded with anybody, but I, I do think that he benefited from the uh, the Russian GRU and SVR. The the overseas component of the uh, of the FSB is the SVR, and that um, they didn't even have to go overseas. They were doing it from Russia, but the the knives were out for Hillary Clinton, and it and it worked. Um, and also <clears throat> faith in our democratic system. So anyway, that's in the Washington Post article today. So moving on to the uh, the Canadian sniper story, you're hearing the story. Uh, that the uh, uh, operator from the Canadian JTF-2, Joint Task Force 2, which is their, uh, their equivalent of Delta Force, that he, he uh, made a more than two-mile shot against an ISIS suicide bomber in northern Iraq, uh, in the Syrian, pardon me, the Kurdish part of Iraq, and, and uh, using a Macmillan TAC-50. Uh, I tend to believe this for a lot of reasons. The Canadians don't lie about this. The Canadians don't bullshit. The Canadians don't lie about beating up Jesse Ventura in a bar in Coronado or whatever. Uh, <clears throat> the the Canadian sniper who took that first long shot in 2002, uh, Rob Furlong, using a Accuracy International, uh, the English uh, AI rifle, it chambered in the 338 Lapua, the very excellent uh, finish uh, round, the 338 Lapua. Uh, that had multiple witnesses, and it really wasn't disputed. Um, th this one, already people are saying, oh, I don't know about this. Well, you know, keep in mind a couple things. Uh, JTF2 is an extraordinarily professional organization. Um, they don't bullshit. 
Uh, they don't lie. They have operated the TAC-50 weapon system, the McMillan TAC-50, which is a 50 caliber sniper rifle. They have over a decade of experience with it, more than we do. Um, uh, and they also evidently have this on video. So they, A, have no reason to lie, B, haven't lied in the past, and, C, well, I should start this, A, they can make the shot. Uh, B, they have no reason to lie about that. C, A, they, they can do the shot. Uh, so I think it's extraordinary, and, and the conditions had to be perfect. Uh, you know, keep in mind, you know, because it's a lot like artillery, that you're dealing with the so-called internal ballistics, and that is everything from the, uh, the breech to the muzzle. So that means the consistency of the ammunition manufacturer. The Canadians use the Hornady 50 cal sniper round, an American-made round. Um, <clears throat> and then, you know, when you get a lot made, made in one batch, you take it out to the range and you dope it. You shoot three three-round groups and you get your data on it and, uh, and, and the whole thing. Um, uh, oh, did I mispronounce it? Lapua? Oh, my, my Suomi is not as good as it used to be. But uh, so anyway, uh, and if you shoot 7.62 by 3.9, if you shoot AK, then you should be getting the Lapua because they make the best stuff. Well, actually, S Serbs make the best stuff, but uh, many say Lapua does. So anyway, the Canadians made the shot, and, uh, and I, I believe it. <clears throat> um, the U.S. Army and uh, U.S. Army Delta Force are more and more... Uh, they, they, we took a bunch of the M14 sniper weapon systems and rechambered them to 300 Win Mag, which is which is my favorite round. And ballistically, when Americans were lusting after the 338 Lapua, saying, "Oh, how, we should get that. We should adopt that," um, there were loads and loads of people in the ammo industry saying, "We have a round that is as good with the same ballistic properties as that, and we've had it for 20 years, 30 years, called 300." Winchester Magnum, 300 Win Mag, and I had a uh, I had a, a Remington 798, and the 798 was like a Remington 700, but um, it, but it was actually a Serbian Mauser. It was the Mauser action, so that's why it was called the 798 because it was like a K98 Mauser, but it was in 300 Win Mag out of the box. And I even put up with a right-hand bolt, and I uh, <clears throat> got a, a 300 Win Mag uh, 798, terrific gun. And I, honestly, I was never at a range where I could shoot beyond 800 meters, uh, even at a rifle range. I brought it to a drill once at Yakima, and uh, we were going to set a, a target out to 1,200 meters on a Bradley range, but we just we didn't grow the ball sack to do it. <laughs> so. But the most the most accurate I ever got out to the thing, cold barrel, meaning first shot out, <clears throat> was about 800 meters. But I that was I was impressed. Since I don't intend to assassinate any human beings, that probably is about twice the distance I would actually require. Uh, and then by and large, I grew up on the Olympic Peninsula elk hunting, and I was surrounded by a lot of guys who put a lot of money into their rifles and the glass. I always, as a lefty, I, I couldn't afford a left-hand bolt on a high-end rifle, so I always used a lever-action Marlin, um, either a Marlin 1895 uh, in 4570 or a Marlin 444 when I was in college in the rifled 44 Magnum. It's effectively a 45, a rifled 45 rifle slug, um, because in my, where I hunted for elk, where I grew up hunting for elk on the Olympic Peninsula. The, the forest was as dense as Cambodia, and I never, if I saw an elk, it was on another ridge a mile away, um, or it was 30 feet away, and at 30 feet, I will, I will stack up my Marlin 444 with a goddamn howitzer, um, and so just by necessity as a lefty, I never got addicted to high-end bolt-action rifles. Uh, I was always a lever guy. Uh, so that, that's how that worked. Um, <clears throat> never. I, okay, let's start answering questions. Uh, I've never even shot the 240 or 249. I have shot the new 6.5 Grendel that the Army, uh, is getting closer and closer to, to, um, to liking. But, uh, otherwise, I usually shot what I could reload. And in high school, I could reload 444. Um, and you can control the ejection, you know, with a lever action rifle. Uh, so I'm still a big fan. As a lefty, I'm still a big fan of lever action. So, 
Uh, so anyway, more on the Hillary thing at connectpal.com, Dark Secret Place. And again, next Wednesday, <clears throat> uh, next Wednesday at Dave and Buster's in Hollywood, we're going to do, um, we're going to do my top 10 war movies. Not We're going to watch clips. And also we're going to watch um, um, my Hall of Shame for war movies and why. I, I'm going to have things queued up to what I don't like. Feel free to debate and call bullshit on, what I, on my opinion. I just, I just guarantee you're wrong. Anyway, you can go to uh, Facebook, uh, Dark Secret Place, for tickets. Um, and uh, I'm, I've, over, for over a year, yeah, the Ontario Dave & Buster's is, is, uh, is in the works. Um, we're trying to work the same deal with them that we have with the Hollywood one, where I, I have to guarantee a certain number of seats. And I already have people who prepaid over a year ago, and I'm really sorry about that. But uh, when the show happens, they'll just, you know, come in. But... I have to guarantee at least 100 seats, so that's kind of what's going on there. Uh, all right, well, that's for the good of the order, if that's all, that I'm going to go play in the dancing waters. That's, that's the beauty of having a well, is that I don't care about the water bill. <laughs> so We had a, the, the pump broke down. Wish I was closer or I'd be there. <clears throat> we, had a, we, we had a pump break after 30 years, so the, the, the guy came and pulled out the pump, put a new one in. And it turns out the water table in 2017 was higher than when the pump was put in in uh, 1987. So drought schmout. I mean, the oxidation on the, on the pipe, on, on the well line, was twice as high. The original oxidation, you can see that line. And then, uh, and then you can see about 15 years of oxidation higher than that. So the water table was higher. Uh, in the last few years. Um, all right. Ciao for now.